Review on Ryobi R18IW7 Cordless Impact Wrench. To start here it is the main technical characteristic. 270 torque with a rotation of the spindle, 3000 RPM that can produce 3900 beats per minute. There are three setting modes and one automatic, which turns off once the nut has been tightened. In automatic mode, it keeps on tightening until a cracking sound is produced, then it stops working and turned off. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the tool. In the review set, there was no battery and charger, but only the impact wrench itself and an additional T25 bit and a bit holder in which we can install it. That is a bit holder from a half inch male square drive anvil to a 1 4th inch hex adapter. The holding device is not in the form of a ring, but the form of a spring loaded cone. The weight of the bare wrench without a battery is 2.4 pounds, and with a battery with a capacity of 5 amp hour, it is 4 pounds. And this is because the tool is equipped with the brushless motors which are not very small, but also not very large. Its grip is comfortable, yet decent in size and weight, and especially with such a battery, there is an opinion that Ryobi belongs to a household instrument, although the term household instrument itself somehow does not sound quite correct. Let's call the tool. Non-professional instrument. It would seem why is it impossible to use the Ryobi R18 IW7 in the professional field where we twist a lot or take it to the construction site and tighten the hexagon head wood screws. Believe me that hexagon head wood screws are highly not recommended to twist by it. However, in private use, when you need to twist a few nuts somewhere and put the tool down, cool it down, and have a rest for a while. And then twist it again, and in this mode of operation, it is possible. It is designed for such a working pace. When it comes to Ryobi, the cooling system works well here, and the brushless has larger blades. It would seem that everything is fine, but let's look inside, and here you can see that the capacitor is located close to the stator. No doubts, the stator heats up and heats the condenser while it can't bear it. Although it states capacitors endure 105 degrees Celsius, there is no point in overusing it. Keep in mind an impact wrench, even a professional one, does not endure heat, and over time it dries up. If the condenser is dry and the instrument is broken. The only thing that can be done is to reach out to the board, which is heavily filled with resin and try to change the capacitor, but again this is good for those who know how to do this. Capacitors are such cranky things if the polarity is set incorrectly, then it's the end. The tool will not fail you and will serve for a very long time, but again, if you work in a private and not professionally. It means screwing something on, then putting it down, then doing something else and cool a tool down, and do everything at this pace. That is not the case when we have a hundred nuts to be tightened at once. In such cases, of course, it will not survive. This warning for those who are going to buy such tools and for those who already have it, keep in mind that tool needs to have a break to cool down. Now let's see how the tool shows up at work. It handles wheel nuts on passenger cars easily. The next thing we want to see is how it works with small fasteners. We will look at all three modes and, of course, the automatic mode. We will see how the automatic mode works. It is very interesting how it will behave with a small thing. Note that at low revs this wrench has a lot of blows. That is if you press the trigger a little the engine does not pull, and if I start to press a little more, then there are too many blows. The spindle speed is controlled by the motor speed, so there is no mechanical switch. Therefore, you cannot regulate this point. We'll see now how the tool behaves in such a situation. The manufacturer states that in this mode, the maximum torque is 120 newton meters. The auto block worked out and was not even cranked. Works very delicately. After checking how the fasteners are screwed in, make sure that they are tightened. Mode 1 gives us a torque of 130 newton meters. Let's see if it can crank the nut. Yes, the nut turned out. Therefore, in the first mode, we can work with such fasteners, but very carefully. Now we will see how it will screw 6 by 100 mm screws into wood. By the way, if you have purchased a nut runner or are going to purchase one, then do not forget to purchase the appropriate equipment. This applies not only to heads, but it also applies to bits, adapters, and everything connected with it. But the bits I have are just like that, for such purposes they are intended. The bit holder works exactly in this way, that is, you need to pull it back, and not just insert it, but pull it back. It has a rough surface and you can cope with it by one hand. This bit holder is such a good thing. Let's try first on mode number one. 
Now on mode number 2. Let's see how the mode 3 performs. Now we're done, don't forget to take breaks. For example, 10 screws will need 10 to 15 minutes of rest. The issue for all impact wrenches that only exist is its noise. It is simply impossible to work with it without headphones. In general, impact and pieces are good not only when working with fasteners. Also, when we twist larger fasteners into the wood and our hand does not twist at all. There is another point here that confuses a little, namely, what is inside the gearbox where the strikers are located. However, given that this tool is designed for private use, then this moment can no longer be considered a liability. We do not sell tools and are not affiliated with manufacturers in any way. The purpose of this article is to show you how to select the right tools for your goals. Even the most expensive tool will pay for itself and make a profit, should it use properly. Oh, 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 oh,